at the Satoshi's Vision Conference uh, in March, I got a lot of really positive feedback about these videos, so I'm, I'm going to resume them starting right now. Uh, and I think I'll probably do about one every week or so. So the theme of these videos is, is pretty much just going to be focused on uh, what is the status of Bitcoin Cash and how do we, uh, you know, what are the next steps in this community uh, to help achieve this, this uh, pretty much shared vision for what we want to do next, which is a focus on growing the, the blockchain and the utility of, of Bitcoin Cash and growing the, uh, you know, the, the user base, getting more users and so on. Uh, and really bringing this technology to a, a large global audience. So in the news today, uh, we have the upcoming May 15 hard fork. So this hard fork, uh, so first of all, Bitcoin Cash will hard fork every six months indefinitely. This is a really important property that the community, although we have some disagreement internally, uh, we seem to agree about a, a lot of the most important things. And it is a good idea to, to have hard forks on a regular basis for a lot of reasons. It allows people to plan around the hard forks uh, and it allows you know, the, the protocol to actually be upgraded on a regular basis. So this hard fork will have a few uh, new uh, things. So first of all, we're raising the maximum block size to 32 megabytes. The reason for that is basically it's the largest block size that we can have uh, without rewriting how the peer-to-peer -peer protocol works. So it's sort of a, a natural next step to, uh, to increase the maximum block size to 32 megabytes. Um, the other things are we're re-enabling new opcodes. So there are some opcodes in uh, the code base that were disabled a long time ago, uh, not, not long after Bitcoin was launched. And we're re-enabling these because these are sort of basic logical operators that are extremely useful uh, building blocks for more advanced smart contracts. So the, this will be sort of interesting to see what people come up with as, as uses for these really basic uh, building blocks. And then the last update uh, that I'm aware of is increasing the upper turn size uh, to 220 bytes. I think it's 40 bytes right now, if I'm not mistaken. So it's being increased significantly so that you can do more creative uh, uses of putting data in upper turn, which basically allows you to permanently archive really small pieces of data in the in the blockchain and the, the most sort of uh, the, the most important use case for that right now are things like colored coins where you can track other assets in a way that's not validated by miners uh, as well as just doing things like time stamping data so you can hash a document put the hash of it in the blockchain and now you can prove that that document existed at a, at a particular point in time and i think there are a lot of other use cases that we'll see become possible by just having a slightly slightly larger maximum size for the upper turn data. Uh, there's a new social network that launched a matter of hours ago called uh, memo.cash and this is a pretty interesting new social network. Um, so of course it drew my attention because I'm CEO of yours and yours is also a social network based on Bitcoin Cash but yours is quite different from Memo. So Memo uh, is all about basically putting the actions of the social network on the blockchain itself. So I didn't read into how it works technically. Uh, there's a pretty good chance they are using op return. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, but it is interesting. And so I was interacting with uh, someone on Twitter uh, about uh, uh, basically, isn't this going to spam up you know, the Bitcoin Cash blockchain? And I think the answer is no. Uh, it's perfectly fine to create valid transactions that contain data in them, and you can do whatever you want to do with it. You can innovate in a permissionless way on Bitcoin Cash. Uh, and I don't think it's going to spam up the blockchain. I think it will, like if it's successful, of course, we'll see a lot of data from the social network on the Bitcoin Cash blockchain. But that's not a bad thing because that means it's being used. And so long as these are valid transactions that are spending a small transaction fee, um, I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, all that's going to happen is uh, it's a use case for Bitcoin Cash. So we're going to see the utility increase. This will be followed by a price increase over the, over the long run on average. Uh, I think the, the near-term price fluctuations are, are unpredictable, but uh, over the long run, the more utility we see on this blockchain, the, the higher the price goes, uh, and the more useful it is to you know, send and receive Bitcoin Cash. And the, the way to think about running a full node, um, not everyone needs to do this. So are you running a business that actually requires validating transactions? 
Um, or even if you're not running a business, maybe you just as an individual are processing so many transactions that you actually need to run a fully validating node. Uh, if you do, uh, then, then you're going to have no problems affording to run a node because it's going to be very inexpensive relative to the volume of payments that you must be sending and receiving. Um, however, if you send and receive a really, really small amount of payments, uh, you might not find that it's worth your while to run a fully validating node. Maybe you don't need to validate all transactions, you just won't run one. So it's okay if the price of running a node increases so long as sort of the right people still have an incentive to run a node, uh, but actually most people don't have that incentive and there's nothing wrong with that, that's okay. So I don't see a problem with that at all. I think it's a really cool use case of the Bitcoin Cash blockchain and I think it's really exciting to see a, you know, a new innovative app like this. Uh, another uh, thing that's sort of in the news in, in, the, in the past couple weeks is uh, there's a bunch of drama about selfish mining. I'm not going to go into it at all. I'll just say that uh, I see in this debate on selfish mining uh, a problem in the Bitcoin Cash community. Um, we only just forked off from Bitcoin last August. Uh, it was only in November uh, that Segwit2x was canceled and therefore it was clear that Bitcoin Cash was the on-chain scaling future of Bitcoin. Uh, so the community is very young. I mean, it's only been you know six or eight months something like that, that, we, that we've existed. Uh, and it's really disappointing to see a lot of, uh, you know, vitriol thrown around uh, between important, in my opinion, important people uh, in the space. Uh, and uh, someone had commented, I, I forget who this was, but there is a, a risk in the Bitcoin cash world, which is that because we forked off from this other chain, um, there's an argument that that's now a part of the culture of Bitcoin cash that we're, we have this mentality that it's okay to just fork off and leave, uh, you know, and go start a new thing. Um, if, if that's what's going on here, that, that that's sort of, there's just a mentality in here that people think it's okay to like argue with each other in this way, ultimately leading to yet another fork, that would be a problem. I mean, that would be a huge problem for, for Bitcoin Cash if we're just gonna be doomed to endless forks in the future. I hope that's not the case, but I do think this is a problem and I think we need to be aware of how do we build a constructive community where we can all collaborate with one another you know, in a positive and constructive way and not rail on each other on social media? And uh, I think the contribution that we can make to this at yours, at yours.org, is to continue to think about uh, what are the incentives to create content on the internet? Because most of these arguments are actually taking place on social media, in particular places like Twitter and, uh, and Medium, although I will say that some of the argument did occur on yours.org indicating that you know either our incentives aren't correct yet or or maybe this is unsolvable but in any case we'll be thinking through how to improve incentives to focus on quality and truth and things of that sort and we're not so much interested in you know people battling with each other and, and so on um, so we'll see about that um, i don't have any clear answers in terms of the incentives of our platform or anything like that at this time but uh, in a nutshell i regard the the sort of uh uh uh, heated uh, arguments between members of the Bitcoin Cash community to be a problem. And I think this is something we should all be aware of and try to fix it somehow. Um, otherwise, it, it, the, the worst case is that it's actually a fatal problem for the Bitcoin Cash community. So that's all I have for today. Um, I think I'm going to keep making these videos uh, about once a week. Um, and so I'm interested in your feedback about what you think I should talk about. Uh, you know, at the Satoshi's Vision Conference, I got a lot of really positive comments about my, my videos, which I really appreciate. And it's really encouraging to hear that people got so much value uh, from me just basically recording uh, all this information I have from this very unique point of view of having basically developed this, uh, this unique app uh, that taught us certain lessons about scaling that are just different from the lessons that other people have learned. So what do you want me to talk about next? I'm happy to keep talking about the same type of thing or something different or whatever. So a few options are, um, I said in my last video that bigger blocks actually encourages stronger decentralization. And this is something that I think is counterintuitive to a lot of people, but I'd be happy to make a video about that. Another thing I could make a video about would be all of the, uh, uh, what is this selfish mining debate about? What is selfish mining? Uh, what are people saying about it and why is this uh you know why is this being debated right now in the bitcoin cash community that's something i could talk about um, another thing would be what are the details of the hard fork so diving into what are the new op codes that are going to be enabled 
uh, uh, in the new hard fork on May 15th. So those are some options. I can talk about those things or I can talk about anything else. So I'm interested in your feedback. So let me know what, what you think would be most valuable for me to create a video uh, about. Uh, so thank you for watching and uh, I look forward to uh, you know continuing to have this sort of video dialogue uh, with the Bitcoin Cash community and other people that are interested in, in either yours.org or Bitcoin Cash. So thank you for watching.